Farm Stadium in Long Beach, California with David Hum. I'm Randy Rosenblum on a glorious day for college football. The series record, Nevada Las Vegas leads 4-3. They've won the last two times back in 1986 here at Veterans Stadium, 31-8. And at the Silver Bowl in Las Vegas last year, the Rebels were victorious, 30-17. Larry Reisbig is in his second year as the head football coach for the Long Beach State 49ers. In that time, he's accumulated a 7 and 15 mark at Long Beach State. His counterpart is Wayne Nunley. There he is in the cap. Wayne is 14 and 18. This is his third year running the program at UNLV. Four years prior to that, he was an assistant coach under the Harvey Hyde administration. He thinks he's going to have an outstanding football team next year. This is the kicker, David Van Steenkist. He was the hero of our game back on October 15th in the last five seconds, kicking a field goal to beat Cal State Fullerton. Back deep, Bernard Jackson, number five for the Rebels. We'll see Bernard today as a wide receiver. Last year, he was one of the running backs for Wayne Nunley. Final Big West game of the year. Fresno State has already captured the crown. They will represent the conference in Fresno, December 10th in the California Bowl against Western Michigan, the winners of the Mid-American Conference. Van Steen Kisk advances on the ball, and here we go. A short kick, and Bernard Jackson picks it up at the 10-yard line. And a great return across the 40-yard line for Bernard Jackson. 36 yards. That's a positive start for the UNLV team. Leon Patterson finally brought him down. Bernard Jackson here on a short kickoff. The, their coverage team looked like it delayed just a little bit. Bernard Jackson with the big return helps Richard Williams with great field position for his very first offensive drive as the quarterback. Richard Williams will run the team out of the eye. Wayne Nunley told us before the game he wants to establish the ground attack. This is Tommy Jackson, breaks a couple tackles and gets two or three yards. Now last year, Richard Williams completed 43 of 100, 541 yards, six touchdowns and eight interceptions. He started five games. This is his initial start of the 1988 year. And he told us he wants to have a lot of fun today. I guess if you win, you have fun. So obviously he would like to get the W. Second and seven. A nice safe pass to his tight end, Robert Welch. Well, if you're going to get your feet wet, a little slant pattern is easy to do it with your tight end. That offensive backs and receivers. Jackson and Brightman, a very fine pair. Wills, McCardle, and the tight end, Rogers. That was a good call there by Richard Williams. The, the thing is, get that first completion and get your confidence going. Arden, Oprin, Paco, Ruggles, and Quinton. Third down and two, the ball at the 47-yard line. Tommy Jackson breaks it to the outside. And he's ridden down by the free safety, Keith Washington. But it's a first down for Tommy Jackson. Now, last year, he had a 44-yard touchdown run against Larry Wright's Big's 49ers. The 3-4 front of the 49ers, Reap, Hawkins, and Duffy. The linebackers to strengthen the defense, Morrison, Ziegenhagen, Goodney, and Jenkins. The deep secondary, Alexander, all-conference material. Jenkins has four interceptions, Patterson, and Washington. Tommy Jackson again. The workhorse early has another substantial game. Tommy Jackson did a great job there. That play was designed to go off the left tackle. He broke it back against the pursuit. But this is the big advantage of having a good running game and a running back like Tommy Jackson with 825 yards coming into today's game. It's second down and five, and that takes so much pressure off a young quarterback like Richard Williams. Jackson already carries three times in this conference game early in the game gets five yards there and it's second and five a good look at Richard Williams the senior 
Keenan McCardle in motion. Over the middle, it's Jackson coming out of the backfield. Amongst other things, Jackson's the leading receiver on the club. That's his 25th catch. Good for 12 yards and another Rebel first down. In a well-designed play, I'm surprised that Cal State Long Beach is not blitzing Richard Williams. This is a good throw to Tommy Jackson. Jackson, you can see the, the condition of the field there. It's, it's very wet in between the hash marks, but a good drive for Richard, Richard Williams on his very first one. Larry Risebig's defense. An area of concern right now. First down for the Rebels at the 27-yard line. Again, it's Tommy Jackson, and this time he's cut down, cannot get to the outside. Good penetration from that man, the free safety Keith Washington, a sophomore from Los Angeles' Bourbon Day High School. Well, there you can see that you're not going to get the AstroTurf cuts that uh, on this field because of, of the dampness of the surface. Jackson is thrown for a one-yard loss. It is second down and 11. We talked to Richard Williams in pregame, and he says, this is my season. It's just too bad. It's only one game long. Remember, he did start the five games last year, including the opener a year ago against Southwestern Louisiana. Prior to that, he was at Fullerton Junior College. Again, they keep it on the ground, and again, they snuff it out. Darren Brightman tripped as he took the handoff, and Pat Quigley was right there to secure the tackle. Watch the footing here as Darren Brightman tries to make the cut outside against Quigley. Usually when the players come out in pregame, they will test the field and usually go back in and say, I want longer cleats to the equipment manager. So it's interesting to see that if they did have, the, if they did bring the cleats. Well, it's a beautiful day today, but last night we had a, a rainstorm here in Long Beach and obviously it affected the field and it affected Darren Brightman on his first carry. It's third and 13 from the 30 yard line. Going deep and too far intended for Ricky Will. At its fourth down, and that'll send on Jim Cook, the placement specialist. Randy, this is where it's interesting to watch because of Jim Cook being the soccer style kicker. He's kicking from pretty well in the middle of the field, which is really the wettest and the most slippery. So his plant foot, and believe me, these soccer style kickers really take a lot of caution sometimes, and sometimes it'll throw their, their motion off. Cook has a tremendous leg. He has the five longest field goals in Rebel history. He's hit from 49, 50, 53 twice, and 54 yards out. This one from 47 yards is high enough, but he's wide to the right, had the distance too. So a nice drive comes up empty. Jim Cook is upset. The 49ers hold 10 minutes, seconds left, first half. We're scoreless at Veterans Stadium. Welcome to the grand opening of Southwestern Bedroom Center. Hi folks, I'm Greg, co-owner of Southwestern Bedrooms. We filled our new 8,000 square foot showroom with the latest in sleep technology. We are your complete sleep center and carry a complete line of sleep products, including waveless water beds and both the Simmons Beautyrest inner spring and flotation beds. We also feature a complete line of adjust beds hide beds futons, and air beds, along with bedding and a selection of new colors and styles that I know you'll like. We also have all the quality furniture you need to make your bedroom complete. I invite you to come down and browse through our inventory of quality bedroom furnishings. Delivery and installation and convenient financing is available. We're more than just a bed store, folks. We're a complete sleep center. Come visit us in the new Chino Town Square off the 60 freeway and Central Avenue between Mervyn's and Pace. Let us show you how to say good night to your day. No score, 10 minutes, 29 seconds remaining. Opening quarter. And for the moment, we have a official's timeout. That's referee Mike Pereira. Now the 49ers and quarterback Jeff Graham come to the line of scrimmage. The all-time passing leader at Long Beach State. Shelton on the draw. And he cracks it to the 35-yard line. Jody Reinhold made the stop. Jeff Graham has had an incredible career here. 
hitting 55% of his aerials this season. Good for 2,300 yards, 10 touchdowns. He's been picked off 16 times. He's been under heavy pressure all year. In fact, last week against Fresno State, he was sacked 10 times. But he has excellent mobility, and he can really throw on the run. A gain of five for Shelton. It's second and five. Over the middle. And that's a first down out near the midfield stripe. Jim Bittner gets 14 yards curling out of that backfield. Interesting, Long Beach State, they run the draw on first play. You can do that when you're a passing team. Lafayette Shelton and Jim Bittner. Derek Washington, the big play receiver. Kelly Ryan and Brian Wiss, who's caught two touchdowns from his tight end position. McKinnon and Adams, the strong side of that offensive line, even though they're designated as the quick side. That's Brian Wiss in motion. And again, it's Lafayette Shelton, and this time they wrap him up. Big number 79, Aaron Christian. Aaron Christian, they want to put a little more weight on him. He and Pappas alternate, along with Doc Wise and Derek Nicholson up front. Linebackers Foster, Ryan Holes, the leading tackler on the team, Clark and Avery Miller. Secondary, Fowler, Al Hemmons, Crozier, and Charles Anthony. Anthony probably the best of the group. Second down and 10 for Long Beach State. Graham with good protection, now he's gonna tuck it under. And he'll get five to the Rebel 45-yard line. Gerald Robinson stopped them there with help from 55, the strong outside linebacker, John Foster. That time the Rebels blitzed Jeff Graham, and, and Graham is a quarterback that you've got to put control pressure on him because he's not a great running quarterback, but he's a guy that can get some positive yardage and cause problems for your defense. And he'll be looking in one of those crucial downs, third and five. Derek Washington deployed wide to the left side. Kelly Ryan to the right side. And they move the pocket. Throwing on the run, but a very fine play by Al Hemmons, the left side cornerback. But that's what they will do. They will move Jeff Graham out of the pocket. He wanted to go to Kelly Ryan, but Hemmons was too tough there, and it's fourth and five. And now the 49ers will have to punt the football. Jeff Graham, six foot four and 200 pounds. He's got good mobility for his size, and that's something that the pro scouts like to see in a quarterback these days. Willie Lujan had a tough time last week, had a kick blocked at Fresno State. Also had one that he was forced to run and turn the ball over. He gets this one off nicely, though. And Keenan McCarter will call for a fair catch at his 13-yard line. Seven minutes, 58 seconds left in the opening quarter from Veterans Stadium. We're scoreless. <laughs> For years now, Carl's Jr. restaurants have served up great tasting food. Now they're serving up a tasty menu of sports action. It's all inside the prime ticket program schedule, available now at all Carl's Jr. locations. This schedule gives you a complete listing of all major events on prime ticket, as well as special discounts on Carl's Jr. food items. The prime ticket program schedule, it's a tasty treat, available only at Carl's Jr. Why don't you get yours? Stop by your nearby Carl's Jr. and get one. From the people who taught you to expect a lot of car for the money, well, here comes another lesson. Before you buy a car, test drive a Fox at your local Volkswagen dealer. UNLV's second possession of the game. Both teams drove the football, but the drives were stalled. UNLV tried a long field goal by Jim Cook and failed. Richard Williams, the senior, is the signal caller for Wayne Nunley's team in this final game today. And again, it's the second back through Tommy Jackson, and he lost the ball. A big hole for Tommy Jackson as he headed up field. This might be a first, Randy. Tommy Jackson ran into the official and looked like he fumbled it in that collision. 
We'll watch the replay. Again, Wayne Nunley trying to establish the run. A great hole up the middle. Jackson cuts back and runs into the official, knocks the ball away. Now we're going to the official's highlight film of great hits. Tommy Jackson is saying it's rough enough running against 11, not 12, too. There you can see the ball just get stripped away. We'll see the recovery. I've never really seen that happen where a ball carrier has run into an official and Robert Welch the ball. is the man that picked it up the tight end and saved the day for the moment for UNLV. Williams looking to throw again. Darren Brightman at the 30, head down to the 35-yard line. Then he's ridden out of bounds. And again, it was Pat Quigley who made the stop, but there is a flag. Now, that would be a gain of 12 yards. It's a personal foul against UNLV, though. 58 on a late hit. So that will wipe out a fine game. Here, 58. I've been imp impressed okay. with the play this of Richard Williams. Down. I've also been impressed with the way Rodney Bell, the offensive coordinator for the Rebels, they've tried to mix in the play action pass, the three to four step drop to get let Williams get rid of the ball, get some completions, and get some confidence. And I think Williams has got to feel pretty good about himself and his play here in the first quarter. Richard Williams has hit two out of his first three for 17 yards. And they march it off back just inside the 20 yard line. Dead ball foul, personal foul on the offense. It's going to be first and 25. That's a call you don't see a lot and really, really hurts this offense. They've got a new quarterback in there. They've got some good things going. And all of a sudden, a foul like that as you look at the two head coaches. I know Wayne Nunley's got to be real upset with that because he had things going and had some momentum going the offensive way. And that puts undue pressure on this man, Richard Williams. Looking to throw. Morrison has him for a sack. Bill Morrison, the senior from Sunny Mead, California. A three-year starter for the beach makes a big defensive play. This time, Richard Williams, you can see the inexperience or lack of playing time here. Really, on this situation, you just want to get rid of the ball if you don't have a receiver open. He takes the sack and puts the Rebels in even a longer uh, down situation to get that first down. Back at their 10-yard line, there's Morrison, a big play player, comes through. It's second and 35 now. Defense can really tee off and come after Williams. So they'll keep it on the ground with Brightman. Across the 20 to the 22-yard line, well shy of the first down and the grasp of R.J. Coors. But he gets the Rebels back some decent field position, and Brightman's so tough up the middle. Running him outside is not his strong suit. When he gains most of that 477 yards, it's between that guard center gap. Hard to believe Darren Brightman doesn't have a touchdown this year. He's accumulated the yards. He's had a pretty good yards per carry. Had a long run of 33 against Tulsa, but no touchdown. He's a real leader on this team though, through his attitude and work habits. Third and 23. And Williams with great pocket protection. For Ricky Wills. It's incomplete. Wills guarded tightly by R.J. Kors, and Kors thought he had an interception for the moment, but he was out of bounds. Richard Williams does not have the, the strong arm. If, if Williams is going to throw deep, he's going to have to throw it much sooner than this. Any receiver is going to be out of your range here, and you can see this goes to a jump ball. Kors ends up with it. Looked like he had possession to me inside the out-of-bounds side. Well, they were fighting for it, and it was ruled that he was out of bounds. Third of the nation, Tony Ryan. High snap, but he has the height to climb the ladder. Stacy Alexander. Call for the fair catch at the 35-yard line. College Football 88 is brought to you by Volkswagen, who invite you to see the Volkswagen Fox today, your local Volkswagen dealer. And by Strohs and Stroh Life. Now you're talking good times, and Strohs is spoken here. Five minutes and 22 seconds left here at Veterans Stadium in the opening quarter. UNLV and Long Beach State are scoreless. Wiss in motion, and Jeff Graham again in. And whenever he's on the field, anything can happen. He's very dangerous. And you can see he has good running skills, this time captured from behind by Doc Wise, number 93. Jeff Graham isn't really known for his running. And as a quarterback, when you cut back against the grain, you've got to remember 
there's pursuit coming to Graham's right. He sees it's open and he's going to turn it up field, but watch him try to cut back and watch the hit. Doc Wise puts on Jeff Graham and never sees it. You have to be able to take the punishment if you're a quarterback. And Graham has been hit a lot this year. Four minutes, 45 seconds left on the ground. Lafayette Shelton. That's a good effort. And Lafayette Shelton with that lunge forward got an apparent first down. Yes, a first down for Long Beach State. With Andre Sutherland hurt, Lafayette Shelton's really going to have to carry the load in the running game today, but he's also so tough coming out of the backfield in the passing game. Along with the statistics you see there, he has caught 39 passes, so he is one of the favorite targets for quarterback Jeff Graham. That's a good throw to Kelly Ryan and a first down to the Rebel 41-yard line. You give Jeff Graham protection, he will find the open receiver. The fun thing about Jeff Graham, Jeff Graham's a senior quarterback, strong kid. Watch him stand in the pocket. He doesn't feel the rush at all. He gets a little pressure to his left, but a good throw there. Jeff Graham, 14-yard gain. Graham is a prototype pro passer. Well, they've had some good players here and Todd Dillon and Doug Gaynor, and he's certainly fallen in their footsteps. A lot of people feel he will stick in the NFL. Bittner in motion, trying to set up that screen. Brian Browning is cut down on the open field. That's a big play by Ron Banks. There aren't very many seniors on this UNLV team, but Banks is one of them, and in the open field, what he did there is not easy. Well, Jeff Graham in the Long Beach State offensive line did a good job of showing pass and setting up the screen. Banks did a great job of getting off the block and making the tackle for no gain. Wayne Nunley trying to shout encouragement to his squad. They have not played well in recent weeks, and he knows it. On second and ten. This is Jim Bittner with a gaping hole inside the 30-yard line. And the free safety, Charles Anthony, pushes him out of bounds. But another first down for the 49ers who are moving it both on the ground and in the air. Good call by Jeff Graham. Jeff has been giving that look to the rollout. You see all the motion go to the right. Bittner back to the left in the open field against Charles Anthony. Tough tackle for a defensive back. That's a 15-yard pickup for Jim Bittner, a junior college transfer out of Moore Park, California. At Moore Park, J.C. Had a touchdown earlier this year against New Mexico State. From the Rubble 28-yard line. Jeff Graham went for it all. On the deep quarter pattern, just out of the grasp of Greg Johnson. Johnson only has four catches this year, David, but two of them for TDs against San Jose State. Well, that should have been a fifth and a third for a touchdown. That was a great throw by Jeff Graham. Graham read the blitz by the Rebel linebackers, audibleized to the fade pattern, and that was one that should have been caught. Three minutes and nine seconds left. Opening quarter. And Long Beach State at the Rebel 28 is looking at second and 10. They move it wide with Lafayette Shelton. At the 22-yard line, he goes down. Excellent blend of play. Hemmons makes the hit there, but Graham is mixing it up nicely. He sure is, and, and you know, the thing with Graham, he's got the great the great arm, so uh, Larry Reisbeck knows he can throw. They're mixing in the play-action pass. They're rolling Graham out so that defense can't sit in there and put the big pass rush on his quarterback. Doing a good job of mixing it up. Mike Newsom wide to the left side. Greg Johnson to the right. On third and four. 49ers trying to get on the board first. Bittner has a first down to the 15-yard line. Jody Reinhold, the inside linebacker, made the stop, but the 49ers have a nice drive. Well, it was third down and three. They're going to bring Bittner underneath. Wiss was just behind. Good throw. Bittner, tough running back, and when he's in that situation, you only need about three yards. Easy to get the first down. Larry Rise big on the sideline trying to engineer the fourth victory of the year for Long Beach State. Bittner emotions. 
Quick pitch goes to Lafayette Shelton, and he has room to the 10, the 5, touchdown! A 15-yard TD run for Lafayette Shelton. Well, and Jim Bittner, the fullback there, got a great lead block on Charles Anthony, and then it was just Shelton's speed outside to cut it back and get the touchdown. We'll watch it again here. Bittner will go in motion. You can see number 33 out in front of Lafayette. Shelton gets the good block on number four, Charles Anthony, and then it's just open sailing for Lafayette Shelton. The 15-yard TD for Shelton. The senior playing his final game in front of the home folks. Gets the 49ers on the board first. Van Steenkist adds the extra point. There is a marker down. Offside on uh, UNLV. That'll be assessed on the kickoff. So the extra point will stand for David Van Steenkiss. Two minutes, three seconds left. Opening quarter, the TD run by Shelton has given the 49ers a 7-0 lead. This is no place to be on your own. Without a guide, you can get lost real fast. It's kind of like taking care of money matters nowadays. You need a partner you can trust to show the way. Like Great Western, they can handle all your banking needs, from home mortgages and refinancing to checking and CDs, even investment services. You see, the Great Western family has over 100 years' experience and more than $30 billion in assets, so you can feel real safe. Need a strong financial partner? Let Great Western show you the way. Martina Navratilova and Chris Everett continue their longtime rivalry where they square off of the Michelin Tennis Challenge. It's Sunday, live at 6 o'clock, exclusively on prime ticket. Lafayette Shelton rambles 15 yards for a TD with two minutes and three seconds left here in the first quarter. David Van Steenkist adds the extra point and the 49ers lead 7-0. A great drive and a good first score for the 49ers. Now Wayne Nunley, his job is to get, keep his players up, get young Richard Williams Williams is going to have a little bit of pressure now to get this drive back, get a drive going, and get some points on the board. Van Steenkiss now kicking off for Long Beach State to Bernard Jackson and Ricky Wills. Wills will not come out. Randy, one of the toughest situations, when you're when you're in the conference fight and you're fighting for a crown, it's easy to get your players up. When you know that you're going home, it's your last game of the year, you've got a lot of distractions. A lot of the Rebel players are from Southern California and will stay down after this game to visit with their families. So Wayne Nunley, both of these coaches, Larry Reisbig and Wayne Nunley, they've got a big job cut out for them today. Wayne Nunley's so optimistic about next year, but... The flow the last few weeks has been negative, and that really bothers him. Wanted to end on a positive note. Darren Brightman can't get outside because of the nice effort of Pete Jenkins, the left side cornerback. Jenkins came up and really ran that run nicely. The strength of this 49er defense is in their linebackers, but they're a group. They fly to the ball. They get a lot of people around the ball. And they've, they've given up some drives and big plays, but their, their main thing is they just get to the ball and try to keep their, their, their offense and, and team in the game. Brightman gains three at second and seven. Down to a minute 25 left in the opening quarter from Veterans Stadium in Long Beach. William. Nearly intercepted by Mark Turville. Number 26 read the play at Icewood and nearly had the interception. That time Richard Williams read the blitz by the 49er defense. It was late, and I think the clock was starting to go on him. That ball could have been intercepted and returned for a touchdown. You can see the quick drop. He waits a little long on it. Remember his timing. You don't get a lot of practice time when you're the third quarterback. You see the ball behind 
Jackson, since it was tipped, he was legal to be hit up. That was Tom Keynes, the linebacker, second on the team in tackles last year, and he's second again this year. He got that paw up, and uh, it was up for grabs. Third and seven at the 23-yard line. For Ricky Wills. Wills has it, and then dropped the ball. It's ruled a fumble and a recovery and a first down. Wills probably would have had the touchdown had he not fumbled. He would have had the touchdown easily. A good throw by Richard Williams. We'll see if Wills holds on to this here. A good throw, 49-yard gain. Watch Wills come back for the ball. Has the ball here, takes one step. He's running and drops the ball. Would have been an easy touchdown. He had the in inside of the field. He could have scored easily on that play. Here from another angle, you can see Wills has the inside position on number 27. Keith Jenkins catches it and then drops the ball. So the Rebels at the 28 now, the 49ers looking for the tying score. Down 7-0 with 45 seconds left in the opening quarter. Williams for Bernard Jackson. Touchdown, UNLV. A 28-yard strike for the senior to another senior, Bernard Jackson. A great throw by Richard Williams that time. Threw the ball over Keith Jenkins, number 27 again. We'll watch Bernard Jackson on the fade. The same pattern, two plays in a row. This is a super throw by Williams. Hits Jackson right on the run and just over the outstretched hands of number 27, Keith Jenkins. From ground level, this is a perfect throw. It's a fade. You want to throw this over the outside shoulder. Good catch by Jackson. Good concentration. And you know that makes Ricky Wills feel much better about things because he fumbled on the previous play when he had an apparent score. Jim Cook now will try to tie it. And does. Uh, just 38 seconds left here in the first quarter at Veterans Stadium, the final Big West game of the year. And Bernard Jackson catches the TD, and that ties the game at seven apiece. Jackson last year spent a lot of time in the backfield rushing the football. He's a converted wide receiver, and for Richard Williams, a golden moment. Well, what a great feeling for this young man. He'd only thrown one pass, no completions in this in the, uh, the whole season, so Richard Williams has to feel great about his play here in the first quarter. On Tuesday, Prime Ticket takes you poolside for the NCAA Water Polo Championship. Prime Ticket continues to deliver the best in collegiate sports. Tuesday at 5 o'clock. We're at Veterans Stadium in Long Beach, California. With David Hum, I'm Randy Rosenblum. We talked about it on our pregame show, a competitive battle. Both teams have moved the football, and now both teams have gotten it in the end zone. Well, and we just said Richard Williams had to have a good drive, get the Rebels back in the game. He's not known for a strong arm. He comes out and throws two balls deep, gets a score quick for the Rebels, and they're right back in it. Dan Davis on your left, Bobby Flanoid on your right. Davis, a real speedster on the track team at Long Beach State. Back at one point, number six, who will return it, ran a 10-400 meter. Now this is Davis from his nine. And Jody Reinhold with a terrific hit on the specialty team. Jody Reinhold, the starting linebacker on the kickoff coverage team. That guy just loves to hit people. He's their, their leader in total tackles and, and really didn't start the season, then came on strong about the second or third game for the Rebels and has established himself as their defensive leader. How many times have you seen it on all levels, those inside linebackers? We saw it with Tracy Rogers of Fresno State all year long. They just love to hit people. The first time I saw him, he, he has a Brian Bosworth-style haircut, and I didn't know who he was, and then his play, he's, he's really going to stand up for him this year. First down at the 25-yard line. The final 33 seconds of the opening quarter. Lafayette Shelton is wide open. And that's another first down. Those backs are getting open. They're finding the seam on the defense. What are they doing, David, to find that opening? Well, when you see a defensive team that plays the zone and the linebackers drop back into their hook zone, the backs out of the backfield underneath, you see Graham with plenty of time to throw and let this play develop. Let those linebackers drop deep to cover the, the outside receivers, and that underneath soft part is always open. Clock winding down on the opening quarter. 
A 7-7 tie. First down at the 37-yard line. Lafayette Shelton runs into that front wall and goes very, very few yards there. That ends the opening quarter. Burn Stadium. A touchdown for each side. Long Beach State and UNLV are tied at seven apiece. I loved the high. I loved it. I swore nothing could touch me. I um, tried to kill myself in ninth grade. I knew what I was doing wasn't right, but I couldn't stop on my own. I feel like I'm not wanted, you know. If nobody wants me, then where would I go, you know? When it feels like there's no way out, Remember, the United Way supports groups in our community that really care. There is a way. United Way. You may not realize it, but either you or someone you know has probably been helped by United Way. Because when you give to United Way, you actually help support many different agencies and programs in our community. Whether it's through a counseling center or a youth group, United Way donations and volunteers are working to deliver services that are there when you need them. Comcast supports United Way. It brings out the best in all of us. As we move into the second quarter, we are tied at seven. From the 36-yard line, it is second down and ten for Graham, who dropped it. And now has to scramble, and down he goes. And now I believe he lost it again. And UNLV says they have it. And they do, apparently. Doc Wise. A big mistake by the senior quarterback. Really the most fundamental play in football is the center quarterback exchange. The final game of the season, you really don't expect th to see this happen. You see number 55, John Foster hit Graham, caused the ball to come loose, and Doc Wise ends up on top of it. And you see that a lot. Once a player fumbles, they'll pick it up. For some reason, they just can't get the grip on it, and they'll fumble it again, and that's what happened to Graham there. Well, they know they've made a mistake, so they end up trying harder to correct that mistake, and there you saw Jeff Graham fumble the ball. And Richard Williams, who's building confidence as this contest goes on, excellent field position at the 49er 34. On the delay, they hand the football off, and running hard is Darren Brightman down to the 25-yard line. A gain of nine for Brightman. When you've got a quarterback that's throwing the ball well, like Richard Williams is here in the early part of the game, the draws work for you. There, Darren Brightman, super job. Now it's second down and short, really a throwaway down. The Rebels can do whatever they want on this down. All right, you're the quarterback. Would you go up top here? Are you kidding me? I'd put it up right away. And Richard Williams, he knows this is his last game. He might not have a chance to wear pads again. I'm sure he'd like to throw it. Well, he has Jackson, the touchdown maker, to the far side and to the near side, Keenan McCardle. From the 49er 26, UNLV trying to get the lead. Tommy Jackson, a big first down, and he slides down at the 15. There were more yards there, but again, he lost his footing. But remember, Richard Williams isn't calling the play, so the Rebels there keep the ball on the ground. They know they've got Darren Brightman and Tommy Jackson back there. Jackson, again, that awareness, the play was designed inside. He saw it was stopped there and bounced it outside, made a big gain again. Well, the slippery turf has cost both Tommy Jackson and Darren Brightman now more yards. On that occasion, Jackson would have had a huge chunk. He picked up nine as it is, and it's first down from the 49 or 15 yard line. The tight end, Robert Welch, and he's inside the five, and it's first and goal for UNLV. Good controlled passing game for the Rebels. We'll watch Richard Williams drop back. He's got great protection here. Williams will look around. Remember, he's a senior quarterback. He's been in the program for a couple years now. Welch on the delay. Watch this big, strong tight end lower his shoulders and try to get in the end zone. Welch has done a great job since the loss of Cedric Davis with the vertebrae and the neck surgery. As you look at him, six foot four, 230 pound junior. Since Cedric Davis has gone down, he's come in and done a great job for the Rebels. Welch out of Chino Hills, California. First and three for a touchdown in the full house backfield. It's Darren Brightman trying to get his first score of the year. And he's about a half a yard shy of Pater. Brightman's really tough down here. Usually they use him in a blocking situation. When Brightman runs the ball, it's usually out in the midfield between the 20s where they run that little delay trap uh, between the guard and center uh, gap. This is a tough kid. Watch him. Watch Richard Williams, the handoff to Darren Brightman. Brightman, watch him accelerate. As soon as he knows he's going against a defensive back, R.J. Coors there. 
see just how close he almost got into getting in to the end zone. I believe that's Tony Paco, the center of UNLV. A senior, fifth year of the program. One of the real leaders for UNLV, along with Bill Oprin on that offensive line. Tony's one of those guys that always fights through the injuries, and to pull him out of a game, he's really got to be hurt. 13 minutes, five seconds left, first half. We're even at seven apiece with UNLV in Long Beach State. Okay, Alex will now do his famous dog impersonations. Grab a straw light, relax. Ready, Alex? All right, who's this? <laughs> Rin Tin Tin! Look at this, look at this. Tramp, my three sons. Right. Yeah. This is my favorite. Bench. Oh, I don't know how he does it. It's amazing. Ah. Stroh Light, fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. Oh, here, here he comes. Here, here. Who's that supposed to be? Beats me. We used to sell a Volkswagen for people with more sense than money. We still do. Before you buy a car, test drive a Volkswagen Fox at your local Volkswagen dealer. Paul Elder has replaced this young man, Tony Pinko, Elder at center, on second down and a yard to go for a Rebel touchdown. Again, it's Brightman. And this time, he goes over the top for the first touchdown of the year for the junior Darren Brightman out of San Diego's Point Loma High School. And the Rebels lead for the first time this afternoon, 13-7. to seven. Usually, it's the tailback in the eye formation that you see get the air under him and get over the defensive line. Watch Darren Brightman from the fullback position. Sky to get over this defensive line. I think he... There's really nobody there, R.J. Coors, to hit him. But a good job, I'm sure Darren Brightman excited about his first touchdown. Darren Brightman, good very impressive kid. running back. And fun kid to talk to, he, he loves playing the game. He'd, he'd like to carry the ball more, but you got Tommy Jackson. McArnold places it down and Cook drills another P.A.T. So UNLV builds on their lead to 14-7. 12 minutes, 53 seconds left, first half. Nothing tastes as festive, zesty, Latin, as the new guacamole bacon cheeseburger from Carl's Jr. Charbroiled with two strips of crisp bacon and rich, creamy guacamole. Olay, the new guacamole bacon cheeseburger for a limited time only at Carl's Jr. Oh, look at this. It's priceless. Naturally. It's mom and dad's 50th wedding anniversary. Here we go. Oh, wait. I'm going to charge it with the American Express card. That way it's automatically insured. Hi. Did you get it? Hi, it's Mom. Terrific. You won't believe it. Don't worry. Remember, I used the American Express card. So it's insured. Lost, stolen, or damaged. A way to protect the things you buy. Membership has its privileges. College Football 88 is brought to you by Volkswagen, who invite you to see the Volkswagen Fox today at your local Volkswagen dealer. And by Great Western's family of companies. With over $30 billion in assets, 100 years strong, will always be there. UNLV, well, they fell behind 7-0 when Lafayette Shelton ran 15 yards for a TD. But Richard Williams has come back and thrown a 28-yard TD to Bernard Jackson, and now a one-yard scoring plunge from Darren Brightman. That with 12.53 left in this opening half, it is the Rebels that lead by a TD. And I've been impressed with the play of Richard Williams and the fact that Wayne Nunley and Rodney Bell are letting Williams throw the ball. They're mixing it up and doing everything they would if, if Charles Price was in the game. Jim Cook, senior record holder at UNLV. Broke most of Joey P. Giovanna's records. Stan Davis will return from his 10-yard line. 
And down he goes, taken down by Gerald Robinson after a 17-yard return. Randy, the Rebels have been averaging on offense just over 13 points per game. They've got 14 points here uh, early in the second quarter. Richard Williams has done a good job of throwing both short and long, and I, I don't think the 49ers thought that Williams could throw deep. And after being shut out 42-0 last week, Wayne Nunley's happy to see his offense wake up. Now it's up to Jeff Graham to try to move his squad. The three-year starter, Jeff Graham, and he sends Jim Bittner in motion. Looking to set up that screen to Shelton. Breaks one tackle, and Lafayette is finally dropped out across the 30-yard line. Able to break the tackle of Michael Fowler. These are terrific numbers for Jeff Graham. Most completions, most attempts, most yards, and he's two TDs shy of Jack Riley's 41. Riley did those terrific numbers, 41 scores, back in 1965 and 66. And today, Mr. Graham is six for eight for 49 yards. Sweep with Lafayette Shelton. Well, that's the same play that got the touchdown. And again, positive yardage and a first down for Long Beach State. Well, and Lafayette Shelton right there showed his athletic ability. This is a sweet play. He made the move like he was going to break it inside, set Jim Bittner, his fullback, up for the block. Watch the sweep. He'll make the Rebel defense think that he's going to go inside. Bittner gets a good job of walling off um, the pursuit by the Rebels. You see him run over number six, Gerald Robinson of the Rebels. And with Andre Sutherland sideline, Lafayette Shelton will carry the load today on the ground for the 49er. Graham being chased and finds Derek Washington. Washington dragged down from behind by Jody Reinhold, but that's what Graham can do. When the pocket breaks down, he still can find his receivers. This is a play designed to go to Derek Washington. It's the delay underneath. They send Shelton in motion to the left. Graham does a good job, but watch the pursuit of Jody Reinhold, a linebacker chasing a speed guy like Derek Washington. And what a big moment, too, for Derek Washington. That's his 100th catch of his 49er career, and he's but a junior. He's seventh all-time at Long Beach State. Middle of the line is Jim Bittner on crossbuck action, and there is a flag down. Little misdirection there, and they've set up that misdirection by Graham rolling to his right and left. It sets up that kind of little delay draw and counter trap. Now one of the rebels. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Went for that face mask. A lot of times that'll happen when all the motion is going one way and they run the reverse the other. A defensive player will just stick his hand out and try to get it back that's cutting back against the grain and they'll get caught in that face mask. We have an incidental face mask, a five-yard penalty against the defense. Down remains first down, half a yard. Randy, you see both teams really opening it up, throwing the ball, running the reverses, the counter traps. Kind of fun to see it. This is a game that is meaningful to each team, but it's not for the conference title anymore. You wonder a lot of times if teams would have played like this during the regular season, what their situation would be in the one-loss column now. And again, Graham went for his little back Lafayette Shelton. And it's second and still less than one. How often do you see a first down play and less than one yard to go? That's what happened with the penalty on that face mask. Well, really Jeff Graham has to be confident. He threw for 352 yards against the Rebels last year. And he had 30 completion. UNLV leading 14-7. 49ers driving. They're at the Rebel 46-yard line. That's a first down carry for Jim Bittner. And he's inside the 40, down at the 37. Both offenses have basically moved the ball up and down the field. We'll see if Graham can get this in and tie it up. Second year for Larry Risebig. Had some tough moments, but as the season has unfolded, his team has gotten better. And Graham is throwing on first down. 
Flag is down again. And again, it's the safety valve to Lafayette Shelton, and he's taken down by Ron Banks. But let's check the marker. With the time that Jeff Graham had there, you've got to believe this is offensive holding. But Jeff Graham does a good job of showing his experience there and his composure. He went to his third receiver. This play was designed to go deep to the right. He looked to the right, looked to the middle, and came back to the left, and he showed the composure he had. Jeff Graham, great kid. He was our prime ticket player of the game on October 15th when he rallied the 49ers in the final two minutes to beat Cal State Fullerton here 24-22. Well-spoken, right. We have holding against the offense. That penalty is accepted. First down. Actually, two infractions against the 49ers there. Legal motion and the holding. And UNLV electing to take the, the bigger chunk on the holding infraction. It's first down and 20 now. Come on, Doug. Graham, six foot four. He's got the frame of the Pro Scouts like him. Play action. This is Kelly Ryan inside the 30-yard line at a perfect strike from quarterback Jeff Graham. 20 yards, that's what they needed. It may be another first down. This play was designed to be a rollout all the way to the outside. Rebel linebacker number 55, John Foster, watch Graham pull up, does a good job of keep keeping his feet, makes a great throw to Ryan to get the first down. And how about Kelly Ryan? It's a first and 20, and he runs precisely 20 and change to get the sticks move downfield. Well, that's he's a junior wide receiver. Receivers have to know they've got to get to the sticks, get the first down, but I was impressed with Graham's presence of Foster to his outside to pull up to make that throw. First out at the UNLV 26. Rebels leading 14-7, but now the 49ers are marching again. Sweep with Brian Browning. And Charles Anthony, the free safety, came up and knocked him off his pins. Just when it appeared that Browning would turn the corner, the defense able to collapse him. This Rebel defense has some great athletes on a good speed in the secondary, and it's hard to sweep and get outside of them. That play lost two yards. And it'll be second down and 12. Slot left, and now Brian West goes in motion. Is it a touchdown? No, at the one yard line, it's first down and goal. 27 yards to Kelly Ryan on a perfect timing pattern. Well, we saw Richard Williams throw the same pass to Bernard Jackson. This time, Jeff Graham, it's the fade pass, man-to-man -man coverage, bump and run. A great throw, watch him keep the ball to the outside and watch Ryan go up. Good concentration, and Hemmons did not even know where the ball is. Al Hemmons, when he sees the receiver look back, he's gotta get his hands up or try to turn and make a play on the ball. There, good concentration by Kelly Ryan. Bittner and Lafayette Shelton, the backs behind Graham. And the 49ers inches away from getting the equalizer. Bittner, touchdown. And Larry Reisbeck's team comes back to within 14 13, and the PAT could tie it. We're seeing both of these offenses open it up and both quarterbacks are, resp are responding. There, another good drive and some good throws by Jeff Graham to get him down close. We'll watch Bittner just take it off left tackle. Powered in, an easy play to get in the end zone. Jim Bittner's second rushing touchdown this year. One against New Mexico State and here today from one yard out against UNLV. David Van Steen kissed. This year kicked a 55-yard field goal. He's got a good leg. And he splits the uprights. And with nine minutes, 53 seconds left in the first half, UNLV and Long Beach State all knotted up at 14 apiece. Are you looking for the best movies on TV? Well, look no further. 
Comcast and HBO are booming with blockbuster hits. Month after month, Comcast delivers the brightest stars right to your door without the hassles of the video store or the out-of-sight prices at the box office. Stick with Comcast and HBO for the best movies on TV. Comcast, Hi, Charles Valella, General Sales Manager for Alpac RV Center in Colton, California. If you missed the giant RV show at Dodger Stadium, then don't worry. Come to Outback RV Center during the month of November, and I'll give you the same discount price as we had at the show. You'll see the largest selection of fifth wheels, travel trailers, motorhomes, and micro minis in the area. Get Dodger RV show prices for the rest of the month of November only at Outback RV Center, where the 10 and 215 freeways meet right here in Colton. With David Hum, I'm Randy Rosenblum. Nine minutes, 53 seconds left here at Veterans Stadium in the first half. And UNLV and Long Beach State tied up at 14, and both teams, David Hum, have moved the football. And they've got to be having fun. These quarterbacks, Jeff Graham, we know the passing ability he has. Richard Williams, he's got to be really happy with the play he's had here in the first half. David Banstein kiss now set to kick off. Right now, the adjustments are going to have to be made on the defensive side. Both offenses are really playing well. <laughs> Wills from his four-yard line. Trying to find the opening in that wedge and can't. Good coverage downfield by Long Beach State and Leon Patterson, number four. Richard Williams has to be having the time of his life. Scotty Sims started the first game against Baylor. Charles Price has come in. Williams has really not had a chance all year this year. I was surprised when Wayne Nunley named Williams to start the game, but he's had a super game. UNLV, but three and seven this year, two and four in the Big West. And Richard Williams trying to make the most of his only start this year. Five of eight, 117 yards, and a 28-yard TD aerial to Bernard Jackson. And there's a fumble. And Williams able to get it back, but that was nearly a costly turnover. Remember, Richard Williams has not had a lot of practice time. He's been running the scout uh, the opposing team scout team offense so he doesn't really get a chance to work with that first unit and there you can see the mistake well he's been third string all year and with Charles Price out with an knee sprain and Scott Sims taking the snaps ahead of him he hasn't been in there very often at a reserve center Paul older as well when Peko was injured and older still in the game excellent protection and now Williams will run. And he's to the 25-yard line where he takes a hit. Those quarterbacks will take uh, brutal punishment when they come upfield. They have to tuck the ball under. Jeff Billman drilled them five yards downfield. But a good job of Williams not taking the sack and losing that yardage. He actually gained three yards. And the thing there, he didn't force the ball in, throw an interception, or make a mistake. He protected the ball and got it upfield. Third and seven. Eight minutes, 30 seconds left. First half, we're tied at 14. That's a first down to the tight end, Robert Welch. Nice throw and an excellent catch as Welch had to reach high up to get that one. You got to think Williams is having fun there. You see his offensive players hitting him on the shoulder pads. They're happy for him. Watch the protection they give him. You see Williams look around. Welch does a good job of, of working into that open zone between the linebackers. Really a vanilla defense by the 49ers. And remember when uh, at the beginning of the game, Williams was just dinking the ball. Now he's throwing it downfield. Well, he's got a little bit of confidence going. He's got some completions, some pretty good stats and numbers here in the first half, and he's just having a good time. Levels from their 45-yard line. Blitz is on, and it's ruled a pass. It was Morrison that nailed him from the blind side. Morrison, who had an earlier sack of Richard Williams, so he's seen number 43 come at him before. I think it's the hit by Morrison that makes Richard Williams' arm go forward. Watch this, the backside. Williams doesn't even see Morrison, and it's basically the hit gives the momentum to that ball in his arm that makes it an incompletion. The speed, though, of Phil Morrison coming in untouched, and he really drilled Richard Williams. Second down and 10. And the Rebels going to the air more in this game. 
than we've seen in the past. Another blitz, and down he goes again, and it was Morrison. That was not a replay. That was just Morrison getting to Richard Williams again. And the fans that are here for this final game really applaud the effort of that outside linebacker. You're always going to have your best pass rusher rush to a quarterback's blind side. You think the Rebels, they have a line slide to the right, and you want to protect your quarterback, and if you've got a guy like Morrison there, bring that guard or if the center's uncovered out and pick up that blind side. And you know what Richard Williams is saying to his teammates in the huddle, please block Phil Morrison. Wayne Nunley wondering about that offensive line right now. Third and 19. Pressure again. There is a flag down. Keenan McCardle tackled from behind by Pat Quigley, four yards shy of the first down. But remember, there is a flag. It's going to be holding on the on the Rebels' offensive line. There was a breakdown early. And a lot of times when a quarterback, especially after Williams, has taken two pretty good shots, you want to protect him against that third. They're going to bring this one back. One of the few situations you see a team elect to take the penalty and bring it back to third down rather than fourth down. But when you've got a punter like Tony Ryans, you don't want to give the Rebels that positive yardage and have Ryans bury you deep inside the 10 yard line. Penalty moves the ball back to the 26 yard line. Three now. It's going to be third down, too, David, and mammoth proportions for Wayne Nunley's team. And Ryans has hit a 71 yard punt this, this year, so the Rebels, really, with their punting situation with Tony Ryans, are never really in trouble. You got a good call for third and 29. That's when you look to the sideline and all the coaches have their back to you. We don't have very many friends on third and 29. Let's see what Richard Williams can come up with. For Ricky Wills, Keith Jenkins with the interception. Gets a block to the 50. He's to the Rebel 42-yard line. Keith Jenkins, his fifth interception of the year. That ties him with Travis Clark of Utah State for the Big West lead. Well, Keith Jenkins was burned early in the first quarter by the touchdown pass from Richard Williams to Bernard Jackson. Here, Williams puts it up for Wills, but watch Jenkins go up and make the catch. Here again from another angle, Wills, if he can't catch that ball, wants to try to turn into a defensive back and knock that down. Jenkins gets his revenge, though, with the interception. At an 18-yard return by Jenkins. Now Long Beach State going to try to recapture the lead. That's a lateral, but it's caught by Kelly Ryan in the flat. And he gets inside the 40-yard line. You see Richard Williams there, number 10, kind of clearing the cobwebs. His offensive line are coming up asking him, are you all right? And he nods his head, he is. But he took a pretty good, a couple pretty good shots there by Morrison on that last drive. Brian Browning has checked into that backfield once again, replacing Lafayette Shelton. Browning wears number 24. Second down and seven. Ball just inside the UNLV 40. A 14-14 tie. Five minutes, 45 seconds left in the first half. Again over the middle. And this is Brian Browning. A good move back to the inside. He ran right by Jody Reinhold and gets a first down.